Hello, I'm Eric Reese. We're here to practice Tai Chi Chuan, a Chinese system of martial arts, exercise, and meditation. We're going to go ahead and salute in. Make a fist with your right hand. Cover the knuckles with the left and relax. Be sure you work at the right level safely as always. Pull back a little bit, just practice at 70% or less if you're healing injuries. So we don't hold responsibility for any injuries you may incur. If you have any doubts, do the exercise from a chair, hold on when necessary, or simply don't do it and you'll be safe that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with loosening the body. We're gonna start with the elbows. Now in the theory of the six harmonies, we say that shoulders are related to hips, elbows to knees, and wrists to ankles. Sometimes when you have an injury in one area, if you also work on exercising the opposite area, it will help it heal. So if I have a wrist problem, I also want to exercise the ankle. Altogether, we want healthy joints. Of course, we want to exercise all the joints and maintain our flexibility throughout our life. So what we're going to do is elbows. So understand elbows also help the knees. We're going to draw circles. Now notice if I'm not using my shoulders, my hands don't come up very high. So if your hand is coming up in front of your face, you're lifting your shoulders. So I'm just gonna hold, do it with one arm first and notice I'm moving just from the elbow, just from the elbow. So we relax the elbows. We may, may not realize how stiff we are in that area, but because so many people have knee problem, knee injury, knee stiffness, maybe knee replacement, we really need to also pay attention to the elbows and help the knees heal. So making circles. Very soft. Later you might speed up when you're ready. First we want to make sure we're oiling the joints so when we speed up we don't get hurt. So just go slow in the beginning. And reverse it down the middle with both hands. There's a little bit of coordination involved with this exercise. Coordination, I want you to think of it as another muscle. Okay, so we need to keep our coordination muscles strong by practicing coordination exercises. And you've also heard use it or lose it. So if we don't practice coordination, as we age, we're gonna get very uncoordinated. Very important coordination. Very soft. And relax. Okay, good. Let's do an exercise for the hands. Presenting a gift helps prevent and heal arthritis. Keep the hands touching make two fists, punch downward, open, gently stretch. Again, I'm using the whole body. A characteristic of Tai Chi Chuan is it's a whole body exercise all the time, always exercising everything, including the mind, including the breathing, every cell, nerve, and muscle is involved all the time. So you see me bending the knees as well. Bend and gently straighten without locking out the knees. So we never lock out the knees or the elbows. And relax. Sometimes challenge yourself to go super slow. In the beginning, it'll make you feel like it's driving you crazy. We're so not used to going slow or slowing down, but it'll help us develop patience and control. Other times you need to use up some 
excess energy so you can go faster. So set your mood, right? Exercise according to your mood or combine fast and slow practice in one session. Now we're going to go ahead and widen the stance. The horse pulling taffy. By now you're getting familiar with a lot of these exercises. This one exercises the heart and the lungs. Pulling taffy. Like I'm stretching a thick rubber band and then letting the rubber band pull my hands back together. Fingers down, open. Fingers up, close by relaxing. Now some of you might use resistance bands in some of your exercise classes. You might say, well, should I hold a resistance band in my hands while I do this exercise in Tai Chi? No. <laughs> so we want to imagine resistances. That way we're engaging the mind instead of just relying on equipment. So in that class, it's fine to use equipment. In this class, we don't need to use the equipment. And relax. Hands above the knees, knee rotations. So remember, exercising the knees is also going to help the elbows. A common injury in the elbows is tennis elbow. So if you've ever had that, you know it probably takes a long time for it to go away. You have to give it some rest, but also some very gentle movement will help it heal. We do nine circles like this, very soft, no pain in the knees. If you're feeling pain, you're working too much. Let's go in the other direction, nine circles. Okay, good. And now let's go ahead and we're going to do polishing the emperor's mirror. Exhale down, inhale up. Imagine holding rags against a full length mirror. Now you can see the challenge of working slowly. If we do it faster, it doesn't feel as challenging. So we want to build those muscles very strong. So we want to go slower. And relax. Okay, shake it out a little bit. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and work on the neck. Looking backwards, is one of the exercises from the set, the eight pieces of brocade. We're going to turn and look over the shoulder. Now be especially cautious when you exercise the neck. Why? Because we're all stiff there. All of us are stiff there. With practice, we'll get a little less stiff. Other side, look back without straining and turn. When the head stops turning, we're going to stretch the eyes and see a little bit more. And gently stretch. Now take in everything that you're seeing without feeling emotionally involved. Just very relaxed. So we allow the mind to become quiet. So this exercise is going to help the neck, shoulders, and upper back, areas that most of us hold a lot of tension. Also, it can cure 
and prevent headaches, including migraine headaches. So just such a simple exercise and you may be able to get rid of your migraines. I've had a couple of students who succeeded with that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do another one. Let's, uh, let's work on balance. If you need to hold on, hold on. If you need to sit, do it sitting. Turn the foot out at an angle and bend that knee. The other foot can be in front, on the toe, or up in the air, five gentle circles. Remember to breathe. So a lot of us, when we're gonna do something difficult, we tend to hold our breath. That actually hurts your balance. Go the other way. In fact, during the day when you get stressed out, maybe behind the wheel of your car or other times, notice that you're holding your breath, you don't even realize it. So practice breathing through any stress and tension. Relax your mind. And reverse. We're just starting with five each way. And relax. Now shake out the foot. Other side. Okay, good. Let's do another one. Wider stance again. Holding the moon. This one is always important, but especially right now, it boosts the immune system. Again, so simple and gentle, it becomes a moving meditation. It has martial arts applications. But remember, fighting from getting sick is a martial art too. Martial arts is about preventing disaster. It could be in our health. It could be other areas of life. It could be preventing financial disaster. Martial arts. It doesn't just mean fighting with another person or physical violence. Holding the moon. Okay, good. So we're just doing a few so we can save a little more time for a Tai Chi form instruction. So now we're a little bit more loosened up. Let's go ahead and practice the form. We're gonna do some moves from the second section or the third section. And we're going to review the first section of Tai Chi. A short form, a shortened form. So you're going to follow along with me. We're facing each other. So when I turn to my left, you're actually turning to your right. Okay. Commencement. I'm gonna go a little faster here. Gently stretch. Grasp bird's tail to the right. Now we're gonna get a little more of a flow. Grasp bird's tail to the left. Ward off. Roll back. Press. Push. Single whip. Playing the harp. White stork cools its wings. Brush knee to the left. Playing the violin. Brush knee to the left. Make a fist. Step. Parry. Punch. Apparent close up. Cross hands.
close. Okay, so for those of you who have been following the series, we started by learning each movement one by one, piecing it together. So if you're feeling a little lost right now, see if you can go back and find the earlier videos. I have them in a collection in actually two places. If you're a Facebook member, you can find my page for my school, Silk Tiger Tai Chi. Silk Tiger Tai Chi has the, all the videos collected there for your viewing. And you can also go to YouTube. If you're not a member of Facebook, you can check it out on YouTube. And my channel there is Tai Chi Chuan Ism. ISM, Tai Chi Chuan Ism. And my name is Eric Reese, so maybe you can search and find me that way. Okay, so lots of ways to practice until we can all get together and practice in person. We're gonna go ahead and go through that one again. Commencement. And just follow as best you can. Turn. Step, step, roll back, press, push, single whip, playing the harp. White stork cools its wings. Chop. Brush knee to the left. Playing the violin. Brush knee to the left. Step parry punch. Apparent close up. Cross hands, close, you can see how with time and experience we can get a flow to the movements. Instead of doing a series of single disconnected movements, we can say from the very beginning to the very end, it is one continuous movement. When we get to that stage, the chi is flowing continuously. And when we unblock stuck chi and we circulate it continuously, we have more healing and more health. So it's a worthy goal to practice and get nice and smooth with our movement. Now let's go ahead and do a uh, movement from the second section of Tai Chi. It's called wave hands like clouds. Now this is a different kind of stepping. So first we're going to look at the steps and I'll just take a few steps. I'm going to go that way, sideways. Now this is a kind of walking that you never do during the day. Have you ever seen people walking down the road like this? I don't know why, because the things are called sidewalks, but yet nobody does this, right? Okay, and probably a good thing. But since we don't do that movement during the course of our normal day, we need to do it in our exercise. Otherwise, muscles are not being used and they get weak. So we practice sideways walking, stepping and shifting. Okay, stepping in. I'm just gonna take a couple steps this way and a couple the other way, okay. And then going the other way. One step. And two step. Now let's do that again. Notice I'm maintaining my balance even when I go slow. That's why we train it. Keeping the weight on one leg for a longer time builds the strength. Now stepping without shifting in midair. 
solidify your stance on one leg. Then step, empty, then fill it up. Now we are going to do the arms by themselves. Arms by themselves. Wave hands like clouds, also called cloud hands. Here I'm imagining at least three people. Well, why do I do that? Because when I use my imagination, what am I exercising? My brain. My imagination isn't in my little toe, it's up here between the ears. So I always want to engage my brain, my imagination, in my practice. So there's somebody over there. They might be punching or kicking. I'm blocking. Here's somebody in front of me. I'm blocking. And blocking low here with this hand. Now there's somebody over here. I'm blocking, protecting the front, protecting the side, protecting the front, protecting the side. So I'm protecting this whole half the circle around my body. Then you're going to say, what if somebody attacks from back there? And they will. You do something else. We'll get to that later. Very relaxed. A moving meditation. Everything's engaged. Very soft. Imitating the action of white fluffy clouds lazily moving across the sky. Cloud hands or wave hands like clouds. Now with the footwork. So can we walk and chew gum at the same time? Can we wave our arms while we're stepping sideways? Well, with practice, we'll develop coordination, make it stronger, and do it. This arm counterbalances my step. Step out. Notice I didn't move the arms yet. I want this for balance. Step out. Now change and shift the weight. This arm counterbalances the step in, then change. We're gonna break it down like this in the beginning before we smooth it out later. Wave hands like clouds. Now step out again. You get the idea? Just follow. We'll do it for a minute. Are you catching yourself holding the breath? Breathe. I'm going to teach you a balance trick in just a moment. Now, of course, you can take more than two steps. Just do an odd number. Three, five, nine, fifteen. Across the room or the space that you're practicing in. And when you get to the end of the room, do it the other way. Okay, good. Now, the balance trick. When you pick up a foot, you can use this all the time in your Tai Chi and other times as well. When you lift the foot, inhale. When you set it down, exhale. It'll make it easier to balance with practice. So remember, we're breathing here in this area of the body. We call this abdominal breathing. We also call it diaphragmatic breathing. So inhale, exhale. Inhale, notice here I'm doing a more advanced breathing technique, reverse breathing. When I inhale, I'm actually pulling the abdomen in a little bit. And pulling it in, this gets my belly out of my way. If I want to lift my leg, I don't, I don't want my belly here and try to lift the leg. It's in my way. So I pull it in. Inhale. I get it out of the way. Then when I set it down, exhale, let it expand. We call this reverse breathing. That's more advanced, so you don't have to do it that way right now. You still do the inhale. But on the inhale, the regular way, belly expands a little bit. 
is sort of contradicting what I just advised. Inhale, exhale. See, I can't really switch it to the other way. I'm so used to the other version. Inhale, exhale. But just don't even think about how to coordinate it. Just coordinate the inhale, exhale. Don't worry about what the belly does. Just observe it and notice. Okay, so that rule would go for kicks too. I lift my foot, I inhale. Now on the attack, I exhale. Inhale, exhale. See. Okay, I think last week, on last week's show, which was number 18, I think we practiced some kicks. Okay, so we're, what we're doing is preparing to do kicking, preparing to do jumping, developing the legs that support those techniques. Let's do another sequence. So we just did wave hands like clouds. Let's do uh, something from the third section of the Tai Chi form. This is a walking drill. I'm gonna to walk toward camera and I wanna show you what we call as an exercise, Tai Chi walking exercise. It's very important. We haven't done too much of that in this series. Step. Notice again, when I step, I'm not shifting the weight in midair. Why, what would it look like if I do that? I'm falling. I'm losing my balance. You can see why practicing this will improve our balance and prevent falls later in life or next week. Let next week is later than now. So we're going to go ahead and step without shifting the weight. Now, once the foot touches the floor, we can shift. Now we're safe. Shift back a little bit and turn. How do I turn my leg? How do I turn my foot? I turn my whole body. Turn the shoulders. Now I'm looking in another direction. Turn the whole body. You have to relax a little bit to free this up, otherwise you're stuck. Now pick up the back foot. Step forward, which is toward camera, the way I'm showing you, and then shift and face camera, face me. Turn, you shift back a little, turn the body. Shift forward, pick up the back foot. Step. Isn't it hard to do it slow? But we're not gonna say hard. That doesn't sound very fun. We'll just call it challenging. Okay, so we use certain language and words to motivate ourselves, and if you're teaching, to motivate the students. So don't say, we're gonna do a really hard exercise now, because right away, people put up a wall, don't they? We put up resistance. Say, we're gonna engage in some challenging practice. Okay, I like a challenge, don't you? I hope so. Okay, so we're gonna step forward. Now we're gonna add the arms. Open. This is called parting the wild horse's mane. And one reason it's called that is it imitates the mane of a horse running. So the mane of the horse kind of goes like this, right? It flops back and forth. So, parting the wild horse's mane. Turn, notice how I'm defending my body high and low, blocking a kick, blocking a punch, and step. Palms pass in front of the heart. Turn. Step. Now I'll do it sideways. Protect the body high and low. Open. Turn. Open. Turn. Open. Now I can turn around if I have limited space. So I turned my foot and I can go the other direction. Three times, open, one more, open, 
turn. You can see how it looks like I'm turning to face an opponent who's attacking me or ready to. And very good. So I hope you're feeling the challenge of our workout and maybe you're feeling a little warmer. You might feel that you're getting some tingling in the hands or some blotchiness in the color of the hands. You see dark and you see light. The dark is the blood and the light color is the chi. So we have an increase of circulation, blood and energy together. In Western medicine, doctors don't generally talk about energy too much unless they're talking about fatigue. Well, you have low energy and they, they try to help you. But we don't talk about how to increase the energy and raise it up, okay? So we practice Tai Chi to raise up the energy, increase the energy and then we have abundant health. The body can function with enough energy. Lacking energy cannot function, starts to malfunction. So it's very important to understand the working of the body and how to support it with your practice. Okay, so we'll get ready to close up. You did a great job today, and I look forward to next time. We make a fist with the right hand, Cover the knuckles, clap three times.